Because every franchise needs a prequel, I guess. Now it's the Hunger Games' turn. Yes, President Snow gets the Attack of the Clones Revenge of the Sith treatment by way of the first purge if it was thought of at Hogwarts. I like that in the parts where Snow doesn't seem like a bad guy so far, it's like you're watching a propaganda movie that Snow made about himself. There's honestly a lot of stuff this movie does surprisingly right. As much as I went in like, okay, we're doing this again, it is a much grittier movie than the other three. We're seeing this world 60 years prior to the other films, so there's really not a lot of flair or showmanship in the games. They just take these kids, dump them in a zoo, then unleash them in a gladiator-style arena and give them some pitchforks. We're also seeing a lot more primitive versions of the technology that we saw before. Most of all, I like that this doesn't feel like a rehash, or like it's the same movie but now it's in the past. The story is structured, told, and focused on a lot more different elements than before. It really feels like its own thing. The movie is 2 hours and 40 minutes, and there could be trims here and there, which I'll get to, but overall, there really is a lot of story here, and it has a good focus and flow. There isn't 12 subplots clumsily put in. It's told in three chapters, and they pack a lot into those three acts. Sure, the movie feels five years too late. I'm not really a diehard fan of the others, but it is sad thinking back to going to see them in these packed houses where we're stuck in the back in these bad seats and there's a line out the door and a big line at the bathroom too. Cut to now and I saw this opening day. There was like one other person there. It's a bummer because it really is better than I thought it would be, but it's not like it's great. It is a mixed bag. I wish the leads were more interesting. The Snow character is okay, and I like that there are these moments early on where you're like, okay, he's trying to do something good, but there's still a bad guy in there lurking around somewhere. The problem is I could never fully buy he's gonna age into Donald Sutherland. And the romance is kind of forced, there's not a lot of chemistry there. Rachel Ziegler has moments where she's excellent, but she has this southern accent which is unnecessary and never believable. Then there's these singing moments in the film that are always distracting and take you out of it. When she's on stage after being picked and then starts singing, it's like you're watching one of those music videos for a Bruckheimer movie where the pop star inserts herself into the movie. There's a scene where she's covered in snakes while singing, and it was like Disney scrapped their remakes and went for a musical version of Jennifer instead. I could almost see that aspect working in the third act if it leaned into being like a satire of a music biopic, like it's a dystopian coal miner's daughter, but it really doesn't. The lowest part of the film, though, really is the Hunger Games themselves. This is where there could have been some trimming. The camera work is solid. And there were some clever moments, like Schwartzman having to pad out the coverage by giving a weather report. But when the games go on so long that characters in the movie are leaving or falling asleep watching it, this section needs to end. The most interesting characters are the side characters, really. Like I said, Schwartzman has some funny moments. Viola Davis is having the time of her life going wildly over the top. Peter Dinklage is a great character, and I wish there was more of him here. Overall, the movie feels like a throwback to the 2007 to 2015 era of teen blockbuster, but they really did try here. I've seen this kind of thing go so wrong, like Fantastic Beasts, where it's wildly unfocused and cluttered with side stories and exposition, but this doesn't do that. I went back and forth on like a C or a B, but there really is more good here than not, so it's a B minus. It's better than I thought it'd be, but still some big stuff that holds it back. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay tuned tomorrow where I'll have a review for Eli Roth's Thanksgiving, and we'll see you next time.